So now we're on the very first page, it says model setup. So here's where you can uh, click enter and then go through and rename your model. If you have a model image, you can uh, already load it into your system. You can select it there. The timer one, we already went over. I've got it set up so that when I hit the throttle start, it starts counting down my timer. Going past the three timers. So here you can do a pre-flight checklist. Uh, you can click that and then you can on another page. I really don't do the pre-flight checklist, um, but you can actually set it up so that if this is not in this position, then you just kind of go through the checks and make sure everything is correct. Um, the default on the switch positions is all of these up. So when they actually turn on the radio, so the switch warnings, when I select a my uh, model, switch warning. it says the SE needs to be up and the arm needs to be up. And I just hit any Thank key. So let me hit the model and go back in there. And if you don't want to have those come on, you just hit enter, enter again, and then just scroll your wheel till it has the X next to it. You could set it up to be uh, B up middle or down if you wish. But I'm just going to go ahead and turn off all these. So one of the unique things about the OpenTX is you can have two different uh, radio modules or many different modules. You actually have a bay at the back. Uh, it's like a JR bay where you can open up the cover and you can pop in a module. And here's a uh, multi-module by iRangeX where it has uh, multiple different radio transmitters so I can actually pop this in like that and then now in my uh, model setup I can have the internal RF be off or using the OpenTX X, uh, JT system so find the FreeSky protocol I'm going to turn that off and then I'm going to come down to the external module and then turn it on and if I come over to the multi-module, then I'm actually talking to the module that I just put into the back of the bay. So I actually could come over and change it from Fly Sky to Hubson, Free Sky, all these different things. And I actually can go through and pick it DSM. So I actually, by selecting the multi-module and the DSM, I can fly Spectrum uh, RC aircraft. So that's about everything in the model page. I'm going to hit page and go to the flight modes. And I really don't, so since I fly my drones, I don't really don't go into the flight modes and adjust that. That's more for like the glider type where you want to have your launch and your cruise and your speed, different settings. Your input page. So here, what I typically will do is the default, once you create a new model, it automatically assigns them this way, your AETR, your aileron or roll on a quad, your pitch or elevator, throttle, yaw or rudder. And I usually like to come down to the uh, input five, hit that, and I'm gonna say uh, A for arm, come down to source, Click that so it's flashing. Engine on. And I'm just going to flick the arm switch. Doesn't Engine really matter. On. Engine on. Engine off. Doesn't really matter where you leave the switch. You just want to say, I'm going to have the arm switch on the input five. Other switches that I use for uh, flying drones, I'm going to go ahead and input six, and I'm just going to say, uh, say like flight mode. and I come down to the source, and I usually put my flight modes on SB, because it's a taller switch. The flight modes for drone would be like your acro level or angle mode and horizon mode. Tracking. 
Uh, other thing I do is I have a beeper that I usually have turned on. So I'm going to hit B. And I like to put my beeper on SC. And then maybe if you have a, a crash mode where you want to flip your motors, uh, come do that. So now on my input page, I've told the radio that I want to have the normal four roll, pitch, throttle, and yaw. But then I also want to have an arm, a uh, flight mode switch, a um, beeper, and a crash mode switch. Then I'm going to hit page and go to the next section on mixes. So now the mixes page, I need to kind of mirror the input page. So the first four channels are automatically filled in for you. The five I need to go through, and I made this my arm switch. I'm going to go ahead and tell it the arm switch like that. Six, I made it to be my flight modes. And the source there was automatically carried over. Seven was beeper. So now the input page should match the output page. So on your mixes page, most people do your uh, throws or your, your rates on the mixes page. So the first uh, channel aileron, I'm going to go ahead and hit edit. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to assign it to a switch so that if I flip the switch, it's going to do 100% aileron. Now I'm going to exit out of this section there. I'm going to hit enter and I'm now I'm going to say insert after. And what this does is it now puts another line for my aileron. So I'm going to go ahead and hit enter, edit. And here's where I want to put it on a switch so that when I'm here, switch D up, it's going to be a different value. So I'm going to come up to the weight and change it down to like 80. So here we can see the switch SD down and you see how it becomes bold. So now the aileron is 100%. And on this radio, you can actually see how this is the input value and this is the output value. It's 100. If I throw it to switch D, now it should only be 80%. So if I do the throttle, um, so that if I go 100% on the stick, it only gives me up to 80% output. So that's how you would go through and set up your uh, output rates. You can also hit edit. And then if you want to do a slight bit of expo, you come down to curve and change it from difference to expo and then Give it a little bit of whatever expo that you want. The modes relate to your flight modes earlier. So if you only want to have uh, a flight mode switch when you have it in flight mode one, then it affects these values. Then you can just turn off the others. And all I'm doing is I'm just selecting the value and hit enter. And then there you can see how all the other numbers are light gray and, and black for mode one. So now when I'm in mode one, these values take place. Otherwise, if I'm on mode zero, then these values would not be active. Outputs is the next page. So here I'm just going to quickly go through and nothing's labeled so I'm just going to go ahead and quickly put in that this one is A for aileron. So now that I'm on outputs, if you need to, if your zero stick 
is not quite zero on your drone or your airplane. Uh, it's, it's trimming a little bit. So this is where you do your sub trim for your uh, servo or your drone or whatever you may be using. Um, so you can hit enter and then adjust your sub trim to get it to be where you wish. And then this is the minimum value and then maximum value. So let's say if you didn't want it to go all the way up to 100, you could decrease this value here. And then finally, this is direction with the arrow. So by default, all of them are in the normal. Let's say your servo direction is backwards. So you can select this and hit enter. And now the arrow flips to the other way. So now you basically just flip the direction of the servo 180 degrees or the value of that particular channel. There's the curve page, global values, not gonna really get into logical switches. There's a whole, <laughs> you could have a whole video on logic switches. Uh, they're pretty complex, but they're, I've used them actually, because if you do things like, if this switch is in this position and this throttle is down, then you can arm. Uh, Joshua Barbell has a great video out there on a, a double, arm switch method there. I've actually put it on a couple of my drones or airplanes. So just so, but you know, cause it's always possible that you could bump your arm switch and then bump your throttle and all of a sudden your aircraft starts coming alive. And then the special function page is where you can come through and set up a certain switch to do a play track or override a value. For example, let's do this one. Uh, this is my flight mode switch. So that, I'm gonna have it play a track. Flight mode one. So it'll play a certain track. Uh, another cool thing you can do is on a special function. You could maybe have a switch. We'll just do that switch. And then say you have a, uh, a altimeter hooked up to your airplane. You could have it say, play value. And then you can come to the next one and then you would scroll through until you find your altimeter setting. And I don't have one hooked up because I don't have a actual aircraft hooked to this, but you would find a value of your altimeter, your sensor here. And then, or I could do battery. And then now, whenever I flip the switch, This is actually telling me the value of the battery inside this radio. So without looking down, I can flick a switch. And it tells me how much voltage is left on the radio. Uh, you could do the same thing for, you know, if you have a uh, battery sensor in your airplane. It's pretty powerful. All right, so moving on to the next page. Uh, scripts I'm not going to really get in into. And then the last page, your telemetry. Um, your RSSI, here's where you can set your low alarm and your critical alarm. And then if you've hooked up additional sensors, again, like an altimeter or your uh, battery sensor, you can hit discover new sensors and it'll go through and well, it'll find them. Of course, your, your aircraft has to be plugged in so that your sensors are active and so it'll find them there. So now it's a lot of dry information, but I just want to help my friend out to, who's getting into OpenTX radios. And I know it was a learning curve for me and I did a lot of video watching, so I kind of wanted to help them out. So if I hold down the system, by default they got tools, so this will look differently according to what uh, ver firmware version you have on there. Um, the SD card is where you would have your firmware if you add additional 
firmware to your SD card. Images is where I have all the images, uh, my particular models that I've added. So these are all the RC planes that I fly that are in this radio. Sounds. The system sounds is where it has the default stuff, and but then all these additional stuff are the um, Amber sound pack. And there's whole other videos out there on how you load up your Amber sound pack. It's, uh, it's kind of specific to what version of firmware that you're running. And on this page here, uh, as if you are fine with a SXR, which is a free sky uh, module, Here's where you can uh, activate your Lua script to calibrate your receiver. And then I use this radio setup page quite often here. So here's where you can set your date and time. So here's uh, the mode, whether it be alarm, how loud the defaults are. The Heptic feel, whether or not uh, you want strong or no key or whatever. Um, I have an alarm set up so when the transmitter radio gets down to 6.2 volts, it's going to sound an alarm. Uh, it'll sound alarm when the activity is for 10 minutes or more. And then the backlight mode, right now I have it set on for this video so it wouldn't dim but I normally have it set to, um, and here you can set your on brightness and off brightness. So on brightness would be uh, when you actually are flying your radio and you move control controls, but then after say 10 second duration, it automatically dims to a certain off brightness value that you select. Uh, for this video, I had to turn the brightness way down and then here is where you can set up your de default channel order um, so that when you're starting a new model um, for FreeSky, it's pretty much uh, AETR is the default. For Spectrum, it's TAER, so throttle, aileron, elevator, rudder is for Spectrum order. And then mode two, that's how you fly. So I've actually made this rotary S1 permanently be my volume switch. Uh, so trainer mode, you can calibrate your setting right here. And then this is also where you can rename uh, your switches. So instead of being your SA, uh, here's where you can see that S1, which is a volume or potentiometer, is I've just re renamed it VOL for volume. And my six position switch, I just labeled it MUS for music. Um, since I fly drones mostly on this radio, I have SA set up for the crash mode so that I just renamed it. Instead of having SA visible in my models, it will actually say CRA. And here's where you can just, uh, I got SF set up for arm. Then here's where you can calibrate your battery again. Like I said, if you measure your vet battery and it's at eight volts, but then the screen says it's seven and a half volts, here's where you can adjust your battery calibration. So it's a lot of information. I hope it, it has helped. Uh, thank you for watching.